So I'm going to be showing you um, a little bit about the flipper engine in uh, my robot Pop Rock. Um, I'm going to discuss the basics of how it works because um, people seem to ask me that all the time and uh, some challenges I've been having with the design um, that I've been working uh, through. Uh, but that's caused it to take a while. Uh, so first off, um, in, on the basic level, this is a pneumatic cylinder. So if you aren't familiar with a pneumatic cylinder, it works by using air pressure to move a force. Um, so when you pressurize the cylinder, the, uh, it extends outwards, and when you um, depressurize it, it retracts back in if there's a force pushing against it. So it can do work. So in the flipper robot, there's an arm attached between these two surfaces, and it pushes once it gets under a robot, you pressurize it and it goes shroom, and that froze the robot. So this cylinder is a little special, but on the basic level, it's like any other pneumatic cylinder. Um, these two points are kind of um, the two contacts. This is where it pivots, um, oops, it's coming apart, and it extends outwards, and this is the second pivot, and it sits between these two points. Um, so I'm gonna show you why this is a little different. So first off, you'll notice this comes out all the way when I pull it out. So this is the um, main pivot integrated into um, the cylinder, uh, the piston kind of uh, component of the flipper engine. Um, you'll notice this comes out and this confuses a lot of people because they're like, hey, won't that come out in the middle of your match? Well, most robots, um, use conventional pneumatic cylinders that usually have some sort of stop to prevent uh, their off-the-shelf cylinders. So they have a stop to prevent the um, piston from coming out of the cylinder. Um, but since, uh, since this is a little bit of a specialized cylinder um, and because it's such a high power flipper, I, I don't want to have the component that um, absorbs all that force uh, to be integrated into the cylinder because it could potentially damage it. Now most slipper robots do have something external to limit the amount of force uh, going into those end stops, the cylinder end stops, because they're not really built for combat robot applications. Um, but if that were to fail or like stretch or get out of alignment, uh, I wouldn't want to use, I just want to keep away from those. So I have the limiting for the cylinder built into the arm. Um, to kind of isolate it um, and hopefully prevent creating any sort of dangerous situation where something gets bent because of a dry fire or, um, and uh, accidental, um, any sort of issue uh, I had with that limiting mechanism. I'd rather this pop off than create a dangerous situation. Um, so now what makes this special? You'll notice there's a little a couple things going on. Um, we have, two ports here and that's odd and they're both very small um, so this cylinder has an integrated valve and buffer tank assembly in a conventional pneumatic robot they'll have two separate tanks they'll have a buffer tank and they'll have this well they'll have the cylinder and the buffer tank and they'll have the solenoid in between and so the air goes in the buffer tank fills it up and then once they are under a robot and ready to fire they release open the valve and they allow the air to go into the cylinder um, now this is, there's some issues with this. Um, it works, but the, every time you kind of have add extra parts in between the cylinder and the buffer tank, you slow down the flow and this affects your flipping power a lot. Um, now the way people get around this is they turn the pressure up to like 1800 PSI as far as they can go basically. Um, and the more pressure allows them to maximize the flow through their valve and their um, their piping, their connecting components, because they're kind of limited on the size of those components. And it also adds a lot of weight and space that they have to package this all these connections in. So this integrates both of them. Um, and what's cool is because it's integrated, we only need two small two hoses coming out um, for connections because they don't really affect, the size of these don't affect um, the flipping speed really um, so I'll just open it up here so we have our kind of I'll call this the valve component um, and then we have the buffer tank which is a little tight I'll just lay them out like they would be in 
um, when they're closed up so you can see inside it. So basically we have two chambers. I'll just push this right back on. So we have the cylinder kind of piston chamber and we have the buffer tank chamber. Um, so you can see right now they're, they're open. Uh, air can travel in between it and if I close this up they'd be open. So the question is, is how do we keep air in the buffer and prevent it from going into the cylinder area? So that's where the valve comes in. You can see on this component here, you can see this white piece of Delrin. Um, this is basically another tiny, well, kind of tiny, it's like a pancake pneumatic cylinder. Um, and if you can see in here, there's just a bore there, you can see it, and it goes most of the way through this part. Uh, and that's where um, this plastic piece sits and there's an o-ring. So this acts as another little pneumatic cylinder. So if I were to pressurize this right here, it would push this white piece of Delrin apart. Um, and that Delrin would come out as, as it would, if, if like now, it would just pop right out. But once it's all assembled, this white piece of Delrin would press against this face right here. Um, and it would sep seal off the chambers. Um, and that would prevent air from moving uh, from the buffer to the cylinder, um, allowing me to store high pressure air in this outer chamber. Um, and then when you exhaust the air from here, um, it, then this would allow, be allowed to retract and, uh, and, and allow the air through. So another question is how does this retract? Don't you normally have to pressurize another end to get it to retract? Um, well, something kind of really neat about this is this, the diameter of this white Delrin puck is actually slightly larger than the surface it seals on. So it has, um, a little bit of area exposed. Um, like, so if you remove the circle from here, it'd be a little bit smaller in there. And so it leaves some area exposed. And because this is pressurized, that pressure will want to push down on that area constantly. Uh, but that force will be overcome by the pressure in there. Um, now, once you release the pressure, um, this will leak and leak and leak, leak going from about 80 PSI to maybe 10, 20 PSI, um, depending on the working pressure here. Um, once that happens, the force being pushed on this little outer rim here will overcome um, the force <coughs> of the air pushing it in the cylinder there. Um, making it retract. Now the moment it starts, air starts to leak from the outer chamber to the inner chamber, this whole entire surface becomes exposed. Now there's um, maybe 300 pounds per square inch pushing down on this entire surface instead of just the outer rim. So it, it really pushes it down and um, causes the air to pressurize quite quick. So we have a qu uh, quick exhaust valve the other end to let that air out. Um, so that opens the valve extremely, extremely fast. I, it, I'd love to measure it one day, but I'm not exactly sure how. Um, so this allows for huge, huge flow. Um, normally, like people are limited by like they use half inch, five eighths fittings to connect their buffer tank and their cylinder together. This is effectively a one and a half inch <laughs> um, bore, full bore of air that's allowed to go through. And because it's so close to each other, it's like nearly a direct connection. So the air can flow at really high speeds right down um, in there um, and pressurize the cylinder. So that allows us for way higher flips um, and way more power than, power than was previously available. And also when you're limiting the flow, you're kind of wasting a lot of that energy um, that you're the valuable energy that you're storing. So I can run this at a lower pressure and still get better flips than an 1800 PSI flipper at like 400, 500 PSI, um, basically.